All right, so this is version one of my uh, loader press printing press. It's a little big. Um, it's got a host of issues, um, all really stemming from uh, squareness problems. First off, the uh, four by fours, which or, you know are three and a half by three and a half, uh, are not square. So if you look, some of them are rectangular in shape which causes problems when I did my measurements all thinking they were perfectly square. So, um, you know, most of these problems don't even show up until you start um, installing frame sliders or, you know, you're lining things up or for one reason or another, the thing is, you know, 26 and a half inches tall versus 26 inches tall and weird issues like that. Uh, secondly, um, when Home Depot cut my wood to measure, it was not cut to measure. Um, a lot of them were off a little bit here and there, and some of them weren't that big of a deal because um, it didn't need to be perfect, but the ones that needed it perfect, of course, were off, so I had to buy a little miter saw and a little miter box and cut a lot of them by hand, which, my God, took forever. So uh, this press is, I, I've decided not to really call it a production version. It's more of a prototype. I've learned, uh, learned a lot of other problems that my mini versions didn't even really th have or think of. Um, so uh, I'm going to go through um, how it works, and then I'm going to go through the problems. So first off, how it works. <clears throat> All right, so you know we're going to use a, a pretty much standard um, boxcar press style um, printing plate, um, one of their metal-backed ones, just in case. Um, in future versions, I think I'm going to put a little thick metal plate on both sides of this to keep it even more straight. But those are like 45, 50 bucks a piece, um, sometimes more, depending on how thick of a gauge steel that I use. So um, for this cost saving version, I'm just going to try it without and see if I absolutely need it. I'm, I'm not doing huge runs. And that's the whole point of this press anyway. So um, first thing, this is the, oh yeah, I'm not going to use any technical names. So I'm going to pull this out. And you're going to notice a couple of the problems right off the bat. Number one, the square issue. See that? Yeah, that sh and my designs are perfectly square, so it would just flip right over. So luckily, though, I cut this little notch out, and I'm able to flip it the other way around. So we flip it around. And this is where the press plate will go. Now, like I said, because of squareness problems, this normally would be completely flat, but it's off a little bit. I could cut this a notch in this one too and make it work, but this is actually fine for now. This little angle. So the press plate would go here. Then you'd bray it with this, you know, traditional brayer, however big. If you notice, this press area is huge, because um, I wanted to print on a 13 by 19, but I don't know if this press, with its problems, are going to be able to print that big. But anyway, so we have a pretty big press area on this side that we can um, put the plate on, and then you bray it up, and then flip it back over. Um, these are all dowel markers for a guide system that I made to guide the press plate to the, um, the slider part, but once I started drilling everything together, what was square and perfect when I made the dial rods was not. So uh, a different order of operations needs to be set up for that. So we flip it back, and it hits, and it slides in, and it slides in really tight. So it's nice and tight against the um, blocks here. And then this part here is where the paper would go, and there's a good couple inches here that we have to play with. Uh, see, this was an accident. I wasn't paying attention, and I drilled these holes too far. They were meant to hold it to this piece, but I wasn't thinking all the way. So uh, I've kind of shortened my available press space. A stupid accident. Anyway, so then you put the paper here, and uh, I'm going to use this system with... Uh, um, I'm going to tape down a piece of paper with my guides and, you know, uh, some corner folds for spacers and things like that. But the paper would go here. And then, so we have our sliding part here with the press plate on it. It sits against this. And then below here is my 15 gajillion pound 6 to 1 jack. It's a 6 to 1. Um, I don't know how this is going to work with me holding the phone because um, after 10 versions of tracks, I kind of... Um, and square issues. This is not the best system, but it's what I got working. So I jack it up here. 
Uh -huh. I let it down a lot. I don't know if you'd ever need to let it down. When it's low, you could probably just put your hand in here, just a couple inches. And then this is the, um, it's holding up this one on the other side. So we... All right, it's taking forever. Make sure it's even. So I, you wanted the dowel rods because uh, it would be a better guide system, but they weren't. Once I started drilling these boards into place, it kind of put the pull them askew a little bit and made them not perfectly square. Which I mean, it, it's a problem. But once I put pressure on it, the damn thing is flat. But lining it up is an issue. So um, we'll see if that comes to a big problem. I mean, I'm a, anyway. So then I put pressure. Boom. Okay. So now I have full pressure of it. Everything squeezed tight. And the jack, I, I, I really, you know, I was talking to people, and if I over jack it, I could put hydraulic fluid back into the jack, but it's actually, you can see it, it you can see it moving. Boom, so there's a good bit of pressure um, on the jack, and I think that that would be a one good impression there. Um, I don't know until I actually start doing it, um, if, if it will or what, so, I mean, I guess I just have to experiment if this will be enough. I mean, I can keep jacking, but I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to put fluid back. Then you flip the thingy over. Leave pressure. And it all comes back down. So it's coming down on its own. So I kind of went through some of the problems that I had with it. And those are pretty accurate. Uh, so being square is issue number one. Um, the quality of the wood is another problem. Um, the frame rail sliders is an issue. Metal to metal, I think, would be a, a, a positive benefit. And some kind of system to line up the two um, as they go together. I talked to a guy, a friend of mine, and he came up with a pretty good idea that I, that I think will work. Uh, some kind of bolts or something that can slide uh, all the way through, like very long bolts. Um, I don't know. Maybe that will come up with a second version. Excuse me, I drink Dr. Pepper and made my voice all bubbly. So we're going to try it and see what happens. Anyway, that's version one.